Welcome to WHHI News. I'm Ally McNair, and here's a look at your headlines. The South Carolina Senate has approved a bill that would prevent state and local governments, as well as schools, from requiring its employees or students to get the COVID-19 vaccine. State senators removed the penalty in the House version of the bill that fined any business that fired its employees for not taking the vaccine. Both versions of the bill would give 20 weeks of unemployment insurance to anyone fired for not getting their shots. The uh, Senate bill heads back to the House for a vote, and if approved, the bill would go to the governor's desk for his approval. Well, the next time you bump into a tourist here in the Low Country, uh, you may want to think about giving them a big thank you. Visitors who stay in our hotels and eat in our restaurants left nearly $5 million in hospitality tax money that the county now has given back to 17 events, projects, and organizations to promote even more tourism. Some of the biggest recipients, the Whitehall Park construction on Ladies Island, which was awarded over $560,000. The uh, First African Baptist Church in Buford, they're getting $260,000 for repairs and preservation. And $250,000 will go for Tefusky Island's beach amenities. Well, the one area of the state that hasn't shared in South Carolina's recent prosperity is a part of the state that more out-of-staters see than anywhere else, the I-95 corridor from Jasper County to Dillon County. A House committee has passed a bill that would create an I-95 corridor authority. Its responsibility, improving economic and educational opportunities along I-95. Now, 10 years ago, a similar bill was vetoed by then Governor Nikki Haley. She had argued that it would expand government and duplicate efforts of agencies like the State Commerce Department. Well, the Buford County School District's adult education program has received recognition from the State Department of Education for developing an innovative program during the pandemic. The award, known as Stepped Up to the Plate, recognizes the program for providing an online class for English as a second language, as well as a new U.S. citizen class online. Well, the issue over transgender sports has made its way to the South Carolina House. On Tuesday night, the House voted in favor of the Save Women's Sports Bill that would ban transgender athletes from participating in sports that don't, quote, correspond with their gender at birth, end quote. The bill now heads to the state Senate. In South Carolina, four transgender students have applied to participate in high school sports since 2016. Fourteen other states have passed similar bills. While Republicans are drawing battle lines in the first district congressional primary, Congresswoman Nancy Mace says she's raised over a million dollars for her campaign in the first quarter of this year. The Congresswoman says most of that money, 970,000, came during the months of February and March after Trump had announced his support for her opponent, Katie Arrington, a former state lawmaker. Mace now has a total of over 2.3 million in cash to campaign against Arrington. Well, please check out the media sources on your screen for more information on these and other stories. Right now, it's time to check in with Maria Soden and our weather forecast. Thanks, Allie. All right, let's take a look at the weather for Friday. So it looks like all three regions, it's going to be sunny all day. Hilton had a high of 71, a low of 49, Bluffton a high of 72, and a low of 48, and Beaufort a high of 69, and a low of 47. The sunrise for Friday is going to be at 7.02, and sunset is going to be at 7.48. Beach tides, low tides going to be at 10.29 a.m. High tides going to be at 3.02 p.m. Let's take a look at the next couple of days. Looks like we're going to have a really nice weekend. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, it's going to be sunny all day in all three regions. Saturday, highs in the 60s, lows in the 40s. Sunday, highs in the 70s, lows in the 50s. And Monday, highs in the 70s and lows in the 60s. That's it for today. Let's hit it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. When we come back, we'll learn about a Bluffton nonprofit that's been helping people achieve personal success since the 1980s. Stay right there.